Dear colleagues, I'm Eva Chaibok, an endocrinologist uh, from the Department of Internal Medicine at the University of Saget, Hungary. I would like to talk about thyroid ultrasound basics like physics. My topics are the followings. The physics of sound, ultrasound, some history, ultrasound as a, as a diagnostic tool, and the thyroid ultrasound. Light waves can propagate through vacuum, but sound waves can only propagate through a physical medium, which may consist of any matter like air, water, metal, tissue, or fluids in the human body. Sound is a vibration that propagates as an acoustic wave through a transmission medium in which the vibrating molecules are creating pressure waves with areas of compression and rarefaction. Particles of the medium do not travel with the sound wave. They merely vibrate and transmit the vibration to neighboring particles. Acoustic waves travel with the characteristic acoustic velocity that depends on the medium they are passing through. So the important quantities for describing acoustic waves are the followings. Acoustic pressure, intensity, particle velocity, and particle displacement. If we want to characterize the sound wave features, we have to talk about, uh, about wavelengths, which is the distance between two points with equal amplitude. The frequency, the number of wavelengths that pass per unit time measured as cycles per second, the unit is hertz. And about the amplitude, the magnitude of pressure change expressed in decibels on a logarithmic scale. High amplitude equals loud sound. The speed of sound describes how fast sound waves propagate through the medium and depends on the density of the medium as mentioned before. Sound waves can propagate faster in high density media. Let's see, in air, the, sound, uh, the speed of sound is approximately 300 meters per second. And in the human body, which consists mostly of water, it's 1,540 meters per second. If you want to graphically describe the sound waves, you use sinus curves showing wavelength and amplitude. On the right-hand side of the panel, we, we can see a sound wave with higher amplitude and higher frequency than the sound wave on the left-hand side. If we increase the frequency on the same amplitude, uh, we can reach the so-called ultrasound. And if we decrease the frequency at the same level of amplitude, we reach the infrasound. In human physiology, Sound is the reception of acoustic waves and their perception by the brain. The audio frequencies are waves that elicit an auditory percept in humans, which are lying between about 20 hertz and 20 kilohertz. Sound waves below 20 hertz are known as infrasound, and sound waves above 20 kilohertz are known as ultrasound. They both are not audible to humans. Sound waves with frequencies above 100 kilohertz do not occur naturally. Only human developed devices can both generate and detect these frequencies. But different animal species have varying hearing ranges, like elephants can generate and detect the sound of frequencies less than 20 hertz for long distance communication, and bats and dolphins can produce sounds in the range of the 20 to 100 kilohertz for navigation and spatial orientation. So ultrasound is sound wave with frequencies higher than the upper audible limit of human hearing and can be used in many different fields in ultrasonic devices to use to detect object, measure objects, measure distances in industry for cleaning, mixing, accelerating chemical processes. And in the medicine, we use it we use them as, uh, for ultrasound imaging or sonography. But how to generate ultrasound passes? Ultrasound transducers or probes contain uh, multiple piezoelectric crystals, which are interconnected electronically and vibrate in response to an applied electric current. 
This phenomenon is called the piezoelectric effect. These vibrating mechanical sound waves create alternating areas of compression and rarefaction when propagating through the body tissues. So if we apply to a special structure, mainly crystals, a mechanical force of stress, we can see this piezoelectric effect. The applied mechanical force results in internal generation of an electrical charge. But materials exhibiting and the piezoelectric effect also exhibit the reverse piezoelectric effect. The applied electrical field generates an internal mechanical strain as well. And this inverse piezoelectric effect is used in the production of ultrasound sound waves. Let's talk about a little bit of history. Probably you recognize Marie and Pierre Curie, but pr probably you are not familiar with the brother of uh, Pierre Curie, Jacques Curie, who was a brilliant uh, physicist. Um, and they both brothers discovered the piezoelectric effect in certain crystals and the reverse uh, piezoelectric effect as well. One of the students of Pierre Curie was Paul Langevin, who developed piezoelectric materials which could generate and receive mechanical vibrations with high frequency. And they were uh, firstly used as sonars or sun navigation and ranging system for submarine detection in the World War I. Later on, he discovered that high power ultrasound could generate heat in bones as well. And that's why throughout the early 1950s, ultrasound was used to treat patients with many ear disease, Parkinson's disease, and arthritis as well. So the first, first physician um, applied ultrasound as a diagnostic, a diagnostic method in human was Carl Doshik, a neuropsychiatrist in Vienna. Together with uh, his physicist brother, they developed a true transmission technique ultrasound device as a me uh, medical diagnostic tool to visualize neoplastic tissues in the brain and, uh, um, and to recognize the cerebral ventricles on the pictures. But later on, uh, researchers in the Siemens laboratories demonstrated that Dushik's images uh, were the result of imaging artifacts and it was quite impossible to image the ventricles and intracranial tumors uh, with that trans so-called transmission technique. And that's why this technique was merely abandoned uh, until it was repla replaced by the so-called reflection technique, which was deployed in nearly all of the pioneering centers in ultrasound development uh, in the United States, Europe, and Japan. The first real-time scanners uh, were developed in the same Siemens laboratory uh, in 1965. And the first publication in the medical literature showing uh, fetal malformation using ultrasounds was published in 1966, used so-called Vedazone uh, machine, ultrasound machine. The earliest commercialized linear array scanner was the multi-scan system in 1972 operating uh, mainly for cardiac investigations, but because of uh, this primitive resolution, it was not very well solved. But the story went on, and these very large transducer probes were switched into smaller and better image resolution um, probes. And further improvement in performance was achieved through focusing the ultrasound beam Increased the number of transducer crystals, improvement in transducer crystal technology, increasing array aperture, faster computational capabilities, improving technical algorithms for focusing and incorporating automatic time gain controls, and progressively replacing analog portions of the signal path to digital ones. In 1975, Marco Brandestini developed the uh, 2D color flow imaging, which was further developed into power Doppler and color power imaging until reaching the so-called tissue Doppler imaging. And as these developments had important clinical impact on the diagnosis of malignant conditions where tissue vascularity is increased and the moving structures other than blood flow. Actually, how ultrasound machines uh, are looking now. 
So these are the bulky ones, the portable ones, and even the wire small ones. Probably the most important particle of an ultrasound machine is the transducer. These transducers are using these so-called piezoelectric crystals, which went through uh, a large improvement and development throughout the time. So the first uh, most commonly used piezoelectric crystal was a piezoceramic lead circulate titanate. But then later on, so-called micro-machine ultrasound transducers were developed uh, and this uh, miniaturized microelectromechanical system based structures uh, was, were used for emitting the ultrasound energy. Two main families of MUTs uh, are, were developed, the so-called piezoelectric MUT, which is the micro-machine equivalent of the classical piezoelectric transducer, and the so-called capacitive MUT, uh, in, in which the electrostatic forces cause vibration of a membrane that is part of a parallel plate capacitor. So this is, uh, for example, a structure of a probe of a butterfly. And this is an intravascular ultrasound imaging, uh, imaging tool using uh, 55 megahertz micro machines composite, uh, composite transducer. There are many uh, commercially available transducers now, uh, but actually three most important forms are mainly used, the convex, the linear, and the sector probe. The linear probe is the vascular probe using high frequencies, having lower penetration, but great image quality and uh, relatively big footprint. The curvilinear or abdominal probe using low, low frequencies, higher penetration, and relatively big, big fruit bins as well. And the phased array, so-called cardiac probe, using low frequencies, having higher penetration, but uh, and small footprints. So in thyroid uh, ultrasound uh, imaging, we mainly use uh, 7.5 to 10 megahertz probes. The ultrasound transducer fun um, can function as a speaker and a receiver as well. The specific feature of the crystal used in the transducer uh, will create the sound waves of, uh, with frequencies of uh, 2 to uh, 50 megahertz. Ultrasound waves are generated on pulses. Pulse repet uh, repetition frequency is the number of pulses emitted by the transducer per unit of time. Ultrasound waves must be emitted in pulses with, uh, with sufficient time in between to allow the signal to reach a target of interest and be reflected back to the transducer as echo before the next pulse is generated. So if, if, if we apply an electrical current to the crystal it causes it to vibrate and those generate ultrasound waves. And the reflected sound waves hit the crystals again, causing it to vibrate and generate electrical current that will be analyzed by the ultrasound machine. So the ultrasound transducer generates short bursts of, or pulses of ultrasound waves and the reflected ultrasound waves are analyzed by the machine during the brief pauses between the pulses. Ultrasound machine can vary the sequence of activation of the piezoelectric crystals and adjust uh, the direction of the wavefront and the focus of the ultrasound beam. So on the left-hand side of the panel, the, um, if we activate all crystals uh, simultaneously, the sound wave travels in a straight direction. And we can see on the right hand side of the panel that we activate uh, first uh, uh, the lateral piezoelectric crystals and proceeds toward the center, the ultrasound will be, uh, be, uh, beam will be focused. If the transducer probe 
sends a signal to the object, it will, it will reflect the wave. If we elevate the frequency of the probe, we can reach a better resolution, but we will lose penetration. So the wavelengths and the frequency of ultrasound are inversely related. Ultrasound of higher frequency has a short wavelength and vice versa. The penetration of the ultrasound wave is proportional to the wavelengths, but image resolution is no more than one to two wavelengths. So the higher the frequency, the better the resolution, but the lower the penetration. And we, we can reach a bad, better image resolution, the possibility to distinguish between two adjacent objects. Let's see this example. If we use a 10 millimeter, two megahertz probe, and we increase the frequency from two megahertz to four megahertz, we, will, we can reach a longer near field and less dispersion. But if we decrease the size of the probe, uh, we will reach a shorter near field, but more dispersion. And we decrease, if we decrease the frequency of the same little probe, we, we can reach a very short near field and more dispersion. So the principal functional components of an ultrasound imaging system is the pulse generator, which produces the electrical pulses that are applied to the transducer, transducer and uh, then they will be uh, later on amplified, increase the size of electrical pulses coming from the transducer after an echo is received. And then these scans will be converted and processed uh, to a characteristic image desired by the, uh, by the doctors. What happens to the ultrasound waves? They can be transmitted reflected, refracted, attenuated or weakened, or totally absorbed, enhanced, and scattered. The intensity of a reflected echo is proportional to the difference in acoustic impedances between two mediums. If two tissues have identical acoustic impedance, no echo is generated. So at most interfaces within the body, only a portion of ultrasound pulse is reflected. They are mainly refracted or attenuated. The brightness of a structure in an ultrasound image depends on the strength of reflection, depends on how much two materials differ in terms of acoustic impedance. At most soft tissue interfaces, only a small fraction of the pulse is reflected we can reach only relatively weak echoes. So on the right hand side, we can see the reduction in pulse amplitude during a reflection between uh, some uh, different tissues. Or structures in a medium can, re can, uh, can reflect ultrasound waves, but how? If the ultrasound wave is reflected, that means uh, that the, uh, the reflected ultrasound wave uh, has uh, an unchanged angle. But if the ultrasound waves are not reflected at the interface between two media, they will continue through the second medium with slightly altered angle. And this phenomenon is called refraction. If the ultrasound pause encounters reflectors whose dimensions are smaller than the ultrasound wavelengths, or when the pulse encounters a rough, irregular tissue interface, they will be scattered. So ultrasound waves are refracted and bent when they travel from one medium to the next. The waves become attenuated as they propagate through the medium. And um, the differences uh, between the attenuation of different tissue parts is the attenuation coefficient. Several factors contribute to this reduction in energy or attenuation of the ultrasound pulses. One of the most significant is the absorption of the ultrasound energy is convert, uh, conversion into heat. And the other ones are scattering and refraction interactions. The rate at which an ultrasound pulse is absorbed generally depends on two factors the material through which is passing and the frequency. 
The brightness of a structure in an ultrasound image uh, depends on the echo strength of the reflection, depends on how much the two materials differ in terms of acoustic impedance. So if we want to obtain a, the best image resolution, the best possibility to distinguish two adjacent objects, uh, we have to have a shorter wavelength. Uh, and uh, with that, we will see the smaller structures. But if you use a higher frequency, we can reach a higher resolution. The axial resolution is the ability to distinguish two objects located parallel to the uh, ultrasound wave. And the lateral resolution is the ability to distinguish the two objects that are perpendicular to the ultrasound waves. On the upper part of the panel, you can see a high density of ultrasound waves near to the transducer, yielding high lateral uh, resolution. And then in the lower part, the sound waves diverge with increasing distance from the transducer, resulting in lower lateral resolution. The temporal resolution is the ability to describe the movement of object over time. The more images that uh, can be produced and presented per unit of time, the greater the temporal resolution is. To create a reliable real-time image of the tissue, the ultrasound machine must know which sound waves are reflected and from where they are reflected. Ultrasounds wave reflected from the same structure can reach the different crystals at different time points. That's why we have to use dynamic focusing. The reflected ultrasound waves have altered properties and the moving structure will alter the characteristic of ultrasound waves. We can use four different modes of ultrasound. The so-called A mode, when a single transducer scans a line through the body with the echoes plotted on screen as a function of depth, they are mainly used as therapeutic ultrasounds. The B mode, or so-called brightest mode, when a linear array of transducers simultaneously scans a plane uh, through the body that can be viewed as a two-dimensional image on the screen. And the M mode, where M uh, stands for motion, a rapid sequence of B-mode scans whose images follow each other in sequence on a screen enables doctors to see and measure range of motion as the organ boundaries that produce reflections move relative to the probe. And the Doppler mode for visualizing blood flow by calculating the frequency shift of a particular sample volume. The Doppler information is displayed graphically using spectral Doppler or as an image using color Doppler or power Doppler. Let's talk about uh, basic principles of B mode or brightest mode ultrasound. Modern medical ultrasound is performed primarily using a pulse echo approach with the brightest mode display. The ultrasound uh, uh, pulses um, given by the probe is quite short and uh, it uh, tra uh, traverses in a straight path mainly. It's often referred to an ultrasound beam, which penetrates the body tissues and the echo signals returned from the many se sequential coplanar pulses are processed and combined to generate the image. What can we see on the ultrasound image? If the ultrasound waves are reflected by a solid tissue or gas, it will be bright on the screen. And if they are transmitted by uh, fluids, for example, it will be dark on the screen. These reflection or transmission causes an additional effect distorted to a bright object. We, we will see a dark acoustic shadowing and this a distorted to a dark object, we will um, see a bright acoustic enhancement. The ultrasound transducer generates sound waves with a specific frequency. This frequency is called the base note. When the sound waves pass through the tissues, the sound waves are de de deformed or distorted, which create harmonics. And these harmonics are also reflected back to the transmitter. And modern ultrasound machines are programmed to primarily analyze these reflected harmonics. 
So there are many innovations in beam or ultrasound, like tissue harmonic imaging, spatial compound imaging, ultrasound contrast imaging, and using integrated post-processing -process technologies, we can reach a better edge enhancement uh, and detailed structural characteristics. The spatial compound imaging or multi-beam imaging uses an electrical steering of ultrasound beams and the echoes from these different directions are then averaged together or compounded in the single composite image. And uh, that's why we can reduce the levels of noise as well as improve contrast and margin definition. Let's see some, some examples of these developments like spatial compound imaging, frequency compound imaging, or uh, always the right-hand sided pa panel as uh, given by the, uh, the new methods. Filter tissue uh, harmonic imaging or poor inversion tissue harmonic imaging and full speckle reduction imaging. The medical imaging modality that maps the elastic properties and stiffness of the soft tissue is elastography. Cancerous tumors will often be harder than the surrounding tissue, as well as liver, um, diseased livers are stiffer than the healthy ones. So elastography is mainly used in hepatology. The contrast and has um, ultrasound is the so-called CUS, is an application of ultrasound contrast medium to traditional medical sonography. The commercially available contrast media are gas-filled microbubbles, uh, which are given intravenously to the systemic circulation. And they can be used to image blood perfusion, uh, perfusion in organs. Let's talk about the so-called motion mode or M mode. M mode provides a one-dimensional view of all reflectors along one ultrasound line. M mode image displays all structures along one line and is useful for quantifying the mobility of structures and measuring dimensions. And it can be combined with Doppler techniques. But actually what Doppler technique is, uh, the Doppler effect uh, was first described in 1843 by an Austrian astronomer, Christian Doppler. If the reflector is stationary, then the reflected sound waves will have the same frequency as the sound waves emitted by the sound, sound source. When the sound source moves towards the observer, the sound waves are compressed, which leads to a shortening of the wavelengths and uh, those in increased frequency. When the sound source moves away from the observer, the sound waves are stretched out which result in increased wavelengths and decreased frequency. The same principles can be applied to blood flow and tissue motions. The Doppler shift is the frequency difference between emitted and reflected ultrasound waves, depending on many factors. The Doppler effect is utilized to calculate velocity and direction of moving objects, objects for example, erythrocytes. The pulse waves Doppler sends short pulses of ultrasound and analyzes the reflected sound waves between the pulses. But continuous wave Doppler sends and analyzes ultrasound uh, continuously, like shown in this picture uh, used uh, during an echocardiography. So the small uh, two-dimensional image is used to align the Doppler line the two perpendicular lines along the Doppler line shows where the sample volume is located. And the y-axis uh, depicts velocities. Velocities directed away from the transducer are shown below the baseline and velocities towards the transmit a transducer are displays above the baseline. So what if we switch on an ultrasound? We have to optimize the ultrasound image. It's necessary to adjust several parameters continuously during the examination, starting with the overview uh, image. 
for which we have to reduce the depths uh, as much as possible for better image resolution and reduce the width if possible. Then zoom in on regions of interest and place the focus at the level of the region of interest. And if the ultrasound image is too dark, we can increase the gain, but with the increasing gain, um, we lose resolution. And that's why we can use the so-called time gain control compensation, adjusting the gain at specific levels along the ultrasound field. The thyroid is an organ easy to scan because of its superficial location, vascularity, size, and echogenicity. Thyroid has a very high incidence of nodular disease, but the vast majorities are benign. More structural abnormalities of the thyroid need evaluation and monitoring, but they may, they may not require intervention. On this picture, we can see the right and the left lobe of the thyroid and the isthmic region uh, hypoechoanic uh, mass is shown. So mainly we use the ultrasound seeing and detecting thyroid nodules. And uh, on the major grayscale uh, sonographic features ex exhibited by the thyroid nodules are the followings. Echogenicity, composition, calcifications, margins, shape, vascularity, spectrum of nodule appearance within each category. And with, with these, we can we can do a cancer risk assessment. We can use ultrasound elastography as well uh, on the thyroid nodules, like uh, shown on this right-hand side the panel, showing normal thyroid tissue encoded with red color and the nodule with blue staining, uh, suggesting a malignant uh, a nodule during a compression elastography. We can use to guide a fine needle respiration biopsy the ultrasound as well. And we can use ultrasound as a therapeutic tool as well, like uh, for radio frequency ablation of a thyroid nodule or a percutaneous adrenal injection into a, a benign cyst of a thyroid. With that, I would like to thank you for your attention. <laughs>